Welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and basically anything else that catches our fancy. I am Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus. Hello. <laughs> we were having a discussion about who had who had the better blow in the um. Oh yes. <laughs> we have uh, very fancy blow matrons now. Oh, oh, that's what we're. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not saturday otherwise i'd give you a different answer <laughs> right um that's like one of the things i i've genuinely been going around blowing my house this is um, <laughs> this is a new thing because i bought a 70 dollar portable gun fan <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> pretty much man no i got this like just for the studio, just to blow stuff out. And I've, I've wanted one for probably a year, but it's the paying $70 for a portal gun fan. Seemed ridiculous. But nonetheless, hey, what have I been up to? I've been playing Doom, which is much better than um, Wolfenstein Youngblood because uh, Doom Eternal. Mm -hmm. They've added the Proton support with the DLSS, and I can play it at 2160p. Which Yay. is very good. Very nice. But I can only play it on <laughs> like barely high because I only have the six gigs of video memory RAM, which is quite unfortunate. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, boo. But you can tell it's a new Bethesda game because it, uh, you're running out of video memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm just waiting True. for the um, Mastodon to go fly into the sky. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. why was there a Mastodon? <laughs> that's really all I've been up to, man. Just like playing around. I have been cruising eBay lately. I've been trying to find a, uh, like an older icon, QCon control surface at a reasonable price. And nobody wants to let them go and no one can sell them for what they want to sell them for. It's one of those situations. So I'm just like, eh, whatever. I'm patient. I can wait. You'll get bored one day. How about you, Jill? You got anything new? Oh Yeah. So I'm finally getting my big birthday gift from my Steve husband tomorrow, and we are going to Disneyland the next two days. Yay! Specifically Disney's California Adventure, and then we're going to do Disneyland at another time. But I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I have to show my, my bling bling uh, <laughs> Mickey sippy cup. <laughs> that looks like a 70s... Uh, <laughs> you know, disco ball. <laughs> you you drink the brains out of that mouse. Drink them good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all you can do when confronted with it. All right, so um, <laughs> OMG Ubuntu. We got to get right into this, man. Um, there's a new kernel out, everyone. Yeah, this is really really uh, exciting because it's a huge release. It's the much-anticipated Linux kernel 5.13, and it includes huge improvements and hardware support. And the big deal here is it includes initial support for the Apple M1 chip. Yay! Right now, it only has the UART uh, serial console currently supported, but it is a work in progress, and eventually you will be able to get <laughs> a Linux distro to boot on an M1 device, <laughs> whether it's a Mac Mini or... Or the new IMAX. So that's coming. And this release also supports AMD GPU free sync or adaptive sync over HDMI. Been oh, waiting for that one. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know we were talking about this a long like several years ago. So that that is really exciting. And then also AMD. Aldebaran, AMD's next-gen CDNA, CDNA GPU accelerator support for a chipset that's not even out yet. Hmm. That's coming. <laughs> All right. Now, I heard there was a, yeah. a terribly exciting thing that <laughs> users will immediately go, we need to disable that. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the big one seems to be Landlock, which is the new um, mm -hmm. file system level uh, security module for the Linux kernel. And uh, basically what it does is it sets uh, applications to have access to the rest of the file system. So even if you start something as root, that application won't have access to the entire file system like it does now, unless you specifically 
tell it to. Which, like Ven was already hinting at, uh, yeah, no. Uh, not for mm -hmm. desktop use, thanks. Uh, for the server, yeah, you probably want to do that because you want that as hardened as possible. Pedro Mateus, I'll have you know my favorite part of installing Fedora is seeing how many <laughs> hours I can go without disabling SE Linux. I made it almost two days one time. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, I go by the amount of warnings. The moment it hits 50, it's like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> and the uh, the other one that may not uh, be as interesting to everyone, but you actually have software interrupt process um, processing. It's <laughs> You can control your interrupts via the software. So if you have, say a preempt queue going because you're running the preempt kernel, you can actually control the interrupts via software, which is nice. Nice. It's very nice. I can finally get rid of my and hardware interrupt controller device. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that thing is You actually awful. have access to it. <laughs> that That's the big one. You actually have access to completely do it uh, over software without use, having to use the firmware, for example, going into the BIOS and whatnot. But the other one that I noticed, because, you know, we do that other foul-mouthed gaming show, was support for the Amazon Luna controller over USB. Mm -hmm. hmm. No word on the uh, Bluetooth wireless mode yet, but USB. <laughs> I think it's going to be definitely interesting, man. Now, one of them, like, there's a handful of noteworthy um, things going on here. A um, couple of updates, up bumps to the XT4 file system, which is always nice because that thing is going to be around with us forever. And that's just always there. It's a permanent thing. And the new TCC cooling driver for the Intel chips. If you have a laptop, you know, tear it apart. There's mm -hmm. probably an Intel chip inside of that. That's inter very, very interesting because, you know, it introduces a cooling device driver that utilizes the TCC offset feature. Okay. Power management. Hmm. Think about that. Now, yes. To what you said, uh, the Amazon Luna, but ah, whatever. <laughs> we're going to get hardware monitoring support for the NZXT Kraken coolers, Pedro. Now nice. how much oh. would you pay? <laughs> See, now uh, there is one NZXT uh, cooler that I do want, but it's way too expensive and I don't want to pay 200 pounds for an AIO. <laughs> as good as it may be, it's too much. Mm. <laughs> well. I mean, we, we can also, um, like, let's go ahead and throw up, like, a pull request for uh, temperature support for the uh, new Noctua. Oh, the passive one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See if we get any bites. <laughs> it's just a chunk of aluminum, though. <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, kids, don't don't buy that to use it. But feel free to go ahead and buy that to same reason I'd buy one, like. To take a picture of that inside of a case, be like, "That's neat." All right, let's get that back out and get some cooling back in there. Before <laughs> I can't it melts. put the side of the case on now, but that, that that's nice. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes. um, so, how does everybody install and update their kernels? Um, Pedro, I'm, I'm assuming you and Jill probably just like wait and be like, "Hey, man, I, I yeah, I update the kernels when the distribution <laughs> updates it." Pretty much correct. Yeah. <laughs> now. What if there's a feature that you really, really, really want? Well, then we can be like Ven and compile it. <laughs> I wait. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have done enough compiling that <laughs> I just wait, yeah. My laziness usually gets the best of me and it's like, eh, I'll wait. <laughs> Natural state at rest. I am always curious. I always like to ask people, um... How they go about it because you run into things like, oh, it's a new kernel. I'm try it out. And on a modern computer, it takes what six to 12 minutes to compile a kernel. And it's so, so easy now. And, um, John Debian, hmm. that's just what I end up doing, but that's good. But I have to do custom kernels for some audio stuff anyway. So while I'm in there, might as well update things. Not running this on Jackbox just yet. I'm just going to let it sit down. What I was waiting for. Mm. What I was waiting for is um, TAC has uh, pushed upstream some fixes for the DigiDesign 003 and Motu MK3 series and some other things based on DICE chipsets for the FireWire audio stack for interfaces. So those will start working. He's implemented a um, like homebrew clock recovery system. Those should start working out of the box. It's already in Linux next, but you'll be able to take it and plug it in go, I could use it as a sound card and it doesn't do crazy things like you're going to do the incorrect way anyway. So, but hey, at least it'll work. 
That is brilliant. I am very, very excited to see that. Uh, let's stick with the audio stuff. Audacity. Muse got it. Everybody was happy with it. There's not been any problems with it whatsoever. And None. just um, hugs, <laughs> love all around. And um, there's a new version. This is a preview version, 3.0.3. This is RC1. RC2 is available as well. But Linux is getting an official app image. I downloaded it, installed it. It told me it didn't know what FFmpeg was. And I pointed it at what FFmpeg was. And it gave me a shrug emoji. So I deleted it. But um, they've also addressed a few things, you know, with the bug fixes. One of the big ones for me is adding back support for Jack because that's mm. needed. Now, I want you to do it right, yeah. Audacity team. Persistent syncs, not ones that just randomly show up only when you hit record. <laughs> that, that That's not manageable <laughs> because, you know, you have a patch base set up. Like, okay, I would like to connect, you know, these 16 inputs to these 14 inputs. Like, okay, but you can only do that once you hit record. What, what what happens when I hit stop? Oh, all that disappears. Isn't that neat? No, it's not. <laughs> Fix it. Now, another thing is update checking, which is good. It'll do, hey, this version's out of date. Would you like to update it? Outside of not working, the app image was uh, pretty neat. I, I didn't have any problems with it. How about you, Joe? Yeah, so I had issues trying to find the app image a couple of days ago, but then uh, uh, I'm glad Ven found it. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> there, so don't feel too bad. It, it really wasn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked everywhere. I spent five, <laughs> possibly six minutes of. Uh, <laughs> I went to like the three different websites that it could possibly be in. It wasn't. I, I, I genuinely yeah. thought I was just having a senior moment, but nay, it just didn't exist. Yeah, I found the unsupported app image <laughs> on the main app image site, but that's about it. So um, what's also cool about this version of Audacity, it has the view track name over and a view track name overlay feature um, that uh, overlays right over the track um, in a transparent with a transparent name. It's a nice addition to keep uh, track of all your audio tracks. Because as you can see in the image that Ven is showing, um, the names of the tracks are on, on in Audacity, but they are truncated because they are too long to fit in the track control panel. And I constantly have issues with, with that, not being able re remembering what track I am on. So kudos to you, Audacity. That was a, a nice uh, improvement. <laughs> Yeah, it's those teeny tiny little gooey things that everyone was very yeah. much looking forward to. <laughs> the new people behind Audacity introducing. But yeah. instead we get uh, out of branch commits to try and uh, sneak in uh, a fix to something that they probably shouldn't have done in the first place. What's that have to do with this release? <laughs> <laughs> this one, not so much. This one, it was just the, the case of the missing app image. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this release... I don't think anyone's found anything naughty yet. <laughs> I'm all for improvement and I like seeing this. I want to see Jack sorted out. I, I'm very wishy-washy with the Destiny because I can take it and leave it. It's something that I just kind of play around with every now and then. But I know a lot of people use it as like their first, um, you know, it's like baby's first recording tool. Like, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, how many people have, like, hey, maybe I'm going to do a podcast or something like that. They'll use Audacity, which is the wrong tool for the job, but it will at least get you down the right path and better usability and stuff like that. Speaking of that, if you want to do audio editing, Audacity, how about a hotkey mm. for insert silence? Anyone in the world who's mm. ever tried to use Audacity for ADR work? <laughs> because we can't. Trim silence, because that's going to mess up the vocal track with the video. Insert silence. That's a lot of extra clicking. I'm just saying. Now, Pedro, I love themes. Can't get enough of them. If you follow me in Discord, uh -oh. I'm constantly posting screenshots <laughs> of my new themes and, you know, task bars and wallpapers <laughs> and stuff like that. And now, yes, yes, yes. Uh, to, to you're my, throwing enough shade now that you're using the dark theme already. To my credit. <laughs> All my <laughs> themes are dark. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, even if you are using the uh, high contrast black and white uh, theme like Venice, you probably don't want to be using GNOME. Because, well, uh, with Ubuntu 21.10, the fine folks behind the Yaru team, which is the new default theme for Ubuntu, have decided, you know what? That's way too much work. Quite literally, that is what they said. Uh, and yeah, it is apparently too much work to get a mixed theme, le- because if it's you use It's supposed to be Yaru, a paintbrush. I thought it was a diseased Twinkie. It's a rule, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you use Twinkie with the handle? It would be t- I didn't say it wasn't terribly How do you diseased. eat the diseased Twinkie then? Do you gonna touch it? <laughs> Same way I wouldn't need a normal Twinkie. Yeah, but it's... Uh, the, the Yaru theme used to be, as you can see in that screenshot there, if you're looking at the video, it is... Uh, it had the window borders dark and the actual contents of the window light, which is a paradigm, as much as I'm loath to use that mm. particular word, uh, that I do very much enjoy when it comes to themes. Have the thing that you, the, the content, be light so you're paying attention to it, and everything else is just decoration so it can be darker. Well, you can't do that anymore, <laughs> not with GNOME 40. Uh, so it's, yeah. And uh, part of me went, again, GNOME Again, are you removing even more functionality for the sake of removing more functionality? But then I started to think, oh, wait a second. Um, and the article mentions this too. Windows, Mac OS, they only give you either the light team or the dark theme. That's it. You do, you get no in between. So I can't honestly blame uh, the gnome people for emulating <laughs> success. Pedro, if it works for the Force, it can work for Gnome. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there is no (laughs) (laughs) in-between. Well, they they said the reason what was is that they are transitioning to GTK4. And the article actually states GTK4 doesn't appear to support a mix of dark header bars and light widgets. They're either all light or all dark. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was kind of their ex- their excuse. But understandable, too. So it looks like we'll have to rely on no more gnome theming extensions. <laughs> or gnome tweaks. <laughs> more extensions! <laughs> to get, uh, to Create get more third-party theme. tools to introduce a uh, functionality <laughs> that was already there. Not too long ago, either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess at the end of the day, if you spend more time looking at your desktop than you do using it, the stuff really matters to you. And um, I know it kind (laughs) of is a sad time when you have less things to stare at or options. Some people actually like taking the time to curate the look of their operating system. I am very much one of those people, although I have fallen into the mainstream because Adapta looks pretty good. And with KD, you can still do the mixed uh, light and dark with the light bits being the bit that you're actually paying attention to and everything else is just mm. set dressing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love customizing too. I do spend quite some time on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful thing about yeah. Linux, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> People can Different be wrong. strokes, except oh, for yeah. uh, Gnome. <laughs> because no they say no that third party extension that you're working on that bit of functionality that our uh, desktop environment used to have but doesn't anymore yeah we removed it for a reason get the heck out of here yeah but you don't even use <laughs> no more you so wound up about it because it's the principle of the thing I don't know <laughs> can you can sh- like um, channel that <laughs> Sp- oh. I don't know. I mean, Spiciness I have the, into something more productive. Uh, probably, <laughs> but then again, we go back to the whole "I'm lazy" bit <laughs> and hating on gnome is easy because ladies and they gentlemen, make it what really you have right there are the fine core <laughs> ingredients needed for an internet critic. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am just the a seeds. massive a hole on the internet. <laughs> so we are not done talking about canonical because they've done something that i'm just, this is wonderful i saw this yeah. i got <laughs> words on that um when i saw this announcement i had to reread it wait what 
what? <laughs> yes. So this is really <laughs> exciting. Uh, my favorite open source 3D modeling and animation suite, Blender, has partnered with Canonical to offer enterprise grade support for the Blender LTS application suite. What? <laughs> this is amazing. So Mark Shuttleworth, the CEO of Canonical, s- stated, It's a privilege to support Blender and the fantastic work of this remarkable community, its founders and leaders. Today's announcement strengthens Blender with full service canonical support and long term security maintenance and delivers the level of assurance that professional Blender content creators need in partnership with the Blender Foundation. This is a really big deal. Because, you know, Blender is becoming even more industry standard and the entertainment industry is using Ubuntu more and more for content creation and rendering. And this partnership will help both grow. This is really awesome. Open sourcing the industry is just wonderful. But that, that was a lot and classier so it, way of coming out yeah. saying, you know, it's like, ah, money. We think we can make money from this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's take a look at what's but, included because we have a standard yeah. and advanced plans. Everything from phone ticket support, severity one through four. I want to know more about that. Like, yes. Oh, <laughs> give, so give me some finer detail because what if I got like a severity 2.7? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What I need is an analogy. See, severity one is like Oh, Burger King is closed, and Severity 4 is like, Waffle House is closed. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) So, so yeah, and Ven is showing on the screen. It's it's $500 per year for standard support, which includes five business days a week, and $1,000 per year for advanced support, which is 24-7 and a much faster response time. So, you know, they'll... They'll be there to clean those bugs and and get the software working <laughs> so you can render. <laughs> so we have that standard and advanced plans. Pedro, I, I want you to call me. I'm canonical tech support. Go ahead and give me a call with your Ubuntu problem, with your Blender problem. Ring, 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 ring. Hey, thanks for calling canonical um, Blender support. Yeah, that's what it says here. Yes, hi. <laughs> wait, wait, can I, oh, uh, I thought I was calling Waffle House. Well, since you're here, uh, I'd like to ask. So I just installed Arch. And uh, it, I read somewhere that it was that based sounds on like an so advanced it's basically problem. Ubuntu. Here, let me tell you more about our advanced program, which starts at $1,000. <laughs> I don't think Canonical's going to do that, but that was too good of a joke to pass up. Um, yeah. But uh, you know I, what I was think cool it's actually was, a good idea yeah. for both yeah. um, in the case of Blender, because as Jill mentioned, it is becoming that much more widely used. And with Ubuntu also having the LTS model, if you're already selling Ubuntu to a company and they need 3D uh, software, tack on an extra thousand and we'll give you support for Blender too. And where it gets kind of interesting is Canonical is going to be offering this support for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you're going to keep that in mind. Yes. This is not just a Linux only yeah. type thing. Now, so in the business support world, Arch too. Having someone to call is one thing. That's one thing. Like, okay, we do have support. We, we can pay for support and we know we can get support. Having someone to blame is a completely other can of worms, which has, strangely, I know that sounds strange coming from the outside, hurts open source adoption because people want someone to throw under a bus when something goes wrong. <laughs> with an open source project, we're like, hey, man, to deal with it. And, not really our problem. Um, <laughs> Go shout out the community. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. File an issue. Well, you know, know what was really, really cool, Vin and Pedro, when you go to the website that's in the in the show notes for the announcement, they actually have a, a live uh, chat person come on and ask you if you need help. So I noticed not, that right off. Not with me having JavaScript disabled. Not with me oh. having JavaScript. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Ublock Origin doesn't let that through either. <laughs> yeah, I yeah for the show I often turn those off so I can get this stuff. <laughs> so one of my big questions is um, just from a practical aspect, um, how do you staff a position like that? I mean, what are the qualifications for um, being a Blender tech support mm. specialist, standard version or advanced version, or are they going to try to do this with you know like manual jockeys, which Hmm. That would be very disappointing. 
Uh, 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 disappointing and yet the most likely way that it will be done yeah yeah but i always feel like we're i see every time i'm talking to somebody and i have nothing against anybody who has that job you know if you're working dell support or something like that you're going to be doing the manual job it's like a choose your own adventure game and i want to play along with them I'm like okay where are we at okay let's see if we can get to this and you know so, i don't know i'm sure they're going to have like uh, you need to talk to James, and James is the guy who can dislocate his jaw and shoot out the blender, you know, laser beam of knowledge and all that. Fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or, well, they yeah, probably that, have well, someone like for each mentioned. OS too. Yeah, they probably have someone for, like for Mac OS, for Windows, for Linux, you know, for Blender on those specific OSs. You would have to because I think one person doesn't know all the. Well, I'm the sure issues. they're going to have, um, <laughs> hopefully, a call center staffed with people. <laughs> yeah. I hope, yeah. <laughs> At least no Linux. Blender is just the thing you run on top of Linux. So that's a good start. Well, I feel kind of bad right now yeah. if, if James is sitting in his cubicle and canonical is like, a oh, staff? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish him the best luck. And that's good. That, that's awesome. going to definitely help adoption across all boards and more people using Blender is better. But we never take a moment to uh, sit back. And thank Microsoft for anything, because um, <laughs> we know that Microsoft hearts Linux. It hearts it really yes. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, last week was no exception uh, with, you know, the whole, yeah, all of the repos were getting 404s. What's happening? Oh, we ran into some space issues. And then uh, the space core came flying in the background and we didn't hear anything else about it. Uh, well, there was another issue. Not that anyone cared particularly, but there was another issue. And the mm. signing key for the Debian Skype repository, it it expired. Oops. It, it's dead. And they have it, or they hadn't, um, by the time the article was written, they had still hadn't uh, fixed it. So, yeah, it is uh, another issue to tack on to everything that Microsoft on Linux has been going through recently. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, and the discussions that I saw around this were, yeah, this isn't the first time this has happened. It it just got a bit more notoriety precisely because of the repo issues. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity, and this is Microsoft. Even, mm -hmm. you know, every single time they that they demonstrated malicious intent there was a lot of stupid involved so i've said it ad yeah. nauseum. <laughs> microsoft for us people of our age we still think of like microsoft as not necessarily the upstart but it's just always been there it's in like the ever present but it, yeah. it, mm -hmm. company years you know like dog years it's quite old and it had, there's different different parts in microsoft there's the new microsoft that that's a real thing there were some really good open source people working towards a different vision than the old guard that is still very much alive and well at Microsoft. And Microsoft mm -hmm. is a large enough company to where teams genuinely have no idea what the others are doing. Like, wait, what? We're doing that? Oh, that's neat. <laughs> but all that's for naught because Sky for Business Online, that's going to be retired July 31st this year. Mm -hmm. It's gone. <laughs> and this is for a regular Skype and, uh, you know, even for regular Skype, it's probably a good idea to start phasing that out. Well, you I'm already killed the to, good to version the, of Skype. To so. throw the other <laughs> end on that is with business going away, I think life for regular, ordinary, boring Skype might be nigh as well. Because mm -hmm. even Microsoft realized, wow, we've taken the largest, most popular video conferencing software package in the world and reduced it to a rounding error compared to things like zoom jitsi and everything else go us discord massively yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like everyone started doing <laughs> skype better than skype well, yeah it, well it gets to the point where it didn't take much Pedro. no no yeah even, <laughs> even microsoft did skype is, better than you know. skype Mm. with teams yeah. precisely <laughs> yeah teams is really where where it's at it is a much better implementation of audio video that's for sure <laughs> interesting times uh moral of the story if you're relying on skype for something stop yeah yeah <laughs> uh, or that 
option will be soon be taken away from you more than likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Something we don't want you to ever stop is uh, helping us out. If you like what we do on the show, you can support this nonsense. We don't have ads. We don't have tracking or anything like that. We even host our own podcast and video and that's not cheap. Um, if you want to help us out, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got some rewards. We got some bonus content just for patrons. Access to our Discord, show notes, you name it. It's there. Pick a reward. Get your name in the requet- The quedits. Yes. The requedits. <laughs> quedits. Are you hunting wabbits? I, ta- no. I saw a putty cat. I'm hunting quedits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. Thanks for making all that possible. Now, something that does happen from time to time, I got to put a name on a wall because our terribly mysterious yes. stranger from last week. It's like, yo, that's on Amazon. Himself. Give me some credit. Yes. Give me some credit or I will cut you. Maybe he didn't say that. But yeah, as it turns out, uh, as uh, you may have guessed, Jill also got a uh, thing last week uh, and myself and Ven got things at the same time. It's just like, well, I, um, I wonder. And as it turns out, yes, yes the mysterious yeah. stranger was Eshep. Thank you very much. Eshep made it Eshep. rain. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. He, and- um, <laughs> Yeah, you got your... Uh, I mean, yes. I can read your message for you, Pedro, if you want. <laughs> I, w- uh, I was going to... Oh, yeah. I didn't want to step over Jill. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. But, but yeah, yeah no, Ushep the, did um, send me more goodies. <laughs> the hood. Go ahead, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Which you uh, you will have seen if you saw the uh, Saturday podcast. Uh, and yeah, uh, he says uh, there was no option to add one. So... Um, T open parentheses zero zero T close parentheses uh, <laughs> to Amazon. So hopefully this one lasts a bit longer. And yes, yes it will because having now worn that for the uh, the time for the review, it is significantly more substantial. I just like that you got a new one, so I can just imagine um like Nori popping from around the corner with the old one going, "Look, I'm Pedro." Her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'd do that. That's an idea. <laughs> Just have to me. Of course you don't. You have to plant these <laughs> seeds of wisdom into people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Ishep had a part two of of the gifts that he was sending me. And last week he sent me magnetic cable ties. And this week I got these cute animal ones. That ha- they have a wire in them. There's a, a rabbit. It's. <laughs> uh, I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's a a a, a wire uh, wrap, and um, I got a bunch of different animals. There's rabbits. There's a frog. Here's a kitty cat, and these are really nice. I'm actually going to use these ones for the back of my computers to you know put all my. Uh, Cables no, what you together can do is you can take organized. up smoking a pipe. And you got pipe cleaners. <laughs> oh, yeah. But see here, this is the bag they come in. Here, i show you the little animals that are in there. Really cute. It's truly <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> They're quite adorable. You know, I wanted to try both options, and it was great that Ishep got me these. It was the perfect timing, because I'm working on my computer room and organizing and redoing things, so it's perfect. And yeah, he sent me a note, but I was able to get this note. I yeah, pay you were the only one who got notes. the notes. <laughs> yeah. So, and he said the same thing he did with the the my gift from last week was this is the best you could wish for, Jill? Question mark. They better be worth it. Wink from Eshep. <laughs> I got your name on the board for the marker. The chalk, the Yay. liquid chalk marker. Oh, that turned out nice. <laughs> it's very Greek looking, Ven, with the E's. Looks like all the other ones. <laughs> yeah, it, it yeah, the thing <laughs> is, we can't see the other ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squint, That's low Pedro enough Mateus. that we can see we it can without see the Carl reflection. And Mike G, and then it's like, uh, Basil? You know what? You Are know there what? in just, the just, Linux Nero? <laughs> just, just to help out. My um, needy, needy co-host. There we go. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Linux Nero, Aldeus, Noctilus, John, go. and Eshep. <laughs> Wonderful. We love you yeah. all. <laughs> Everyone can enjoy my cursive. <laughs> well, complete lack thereof. <laughs> 
But yes. Oh, I got a little like, thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to read your message. <laughs> it's from the chair, man. It's just like straight up. It's an arse planter. Requested. Thank you. That's what I like. Straight to the point. It's not sexy stuff. It's just stuff for the studio that gets you on this board, but it's stuff we need anyway. So, and you know what? Week two, still cherry. Yeah. Still, still haven't given awesome. away the old one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. People are still uh, doubting the why it is. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. But yeah, uh, I also need to uh, thank one extra person whose notes actually, you know, got here. And uh, it's uh, Artharon. And Artharon got me two things. Uh, the first one is the big choker <laughs> of a uh, Noctua Chromax 140 mil, which of course it's a Noctua fan, so it comes with all the accessories. Is it brown? The big box. (laughs) And uh, he says, Hola, Peter. Here's some 140 mil whoosh for you. I can't think of anything clever or funny to add. Blame the nasty weather. Yours hatefully, Artharon. Thank you. Uh, You know, that didn't take as long as, like, it's a fan, comma, nerd. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) But, uh, in the same box, because the two things arrived in the same box, came um, another whooshy thing. A very, a much louder, significantly louder, but then again, it also pushes a heck of a lot more air. It's uh, the CompuCleaner Expert, which is a mm-hmm. 550 watt um, whoosher. It's a blower. Uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, pardon the artistic liberties that I will have to take with the reading on Wednesdays, Artharon, because, you know, it's Wednesday. So, <clears throat> here, with these fancy suck with two Cs, uh, you no longer need to buy or borrow compressed air cans. Borrow. Uh, it saves a lot of time with cleaning pewters. Just don't stick your thing in it. Uh, <laughs> it hurts. A friend told me. <laughs> your eternal not simp, Artharon. <laughs> Aw, Arthurin's our advisor, so he can get away with that. <laughs> oh, he can say whatever he wants. He's amazing. Yeah, we love him. Put that to the test. <laughs> Aw, and we also have a, a new Patreon, Van. Um, Oil of Hope is our new Patreon. Thank you very much. Look forward to Latest. hopefully chatting with you in Discord. <laughs> Yeah, a will of hope hopped in. That, that's always fun when somebody pops into the Discord for the first, first time. Like, hey, whoa, there are yeah. a lot of people in here. I'm like, yeah, hi, how's it going? Let's get to know each other. <laughs> it is a good time. All right, beautiful people. Uh, we are going to be running shorter in time. So let's go ahead and hop into a slice of pie. That is Ooh, cherry pie. A continuation of Microsoft Loves Linux. Sort of. One of the things I do not like about <laughs> what Little Chrome hearts, has done, hearts. Chromium has done, is they've replaced the transparent background with that. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> and that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is for anybody who has to search for transparent graphics, for cover art and stuff like that, is your nemesis because that's what a JPEG <laughs> like, looks luck. like. Right. <laughs> like, oh. Oh, oh, it really is. So there's a gamble sometimes, man, because <laughs> it's really transparent or not. But hey, Chrome, Chrome going to Chrome. Windows on a Pi. Why you would ever want no. to do this is <laughs> truly beyond me. It, it, <laughs> it is not something I would ever recommend, but we are all aware that Windows 10, there was a build. For the Raspberry Pi 4. And I. Morbid curiosity. Never get the best of me. But I knew it was mm-hmm. a thing. And I was thinking. Hey man. You know. Do, do you have a Pi 4 laying around the house. That you're angry at. Yeah. Well. You can now give it the gift. <laughs> of Windows 11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I'll call it bloat pie then. <laughs> By all accounts. <laughs> This might take a few minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> there it It'll is. It'll take more than a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uptime, 18. Look at that. That's kind of impressive. 18 minutes on a by four. It's not too bad. And, uh, oh, Lord. I, <laughs> hmm. Oh, boy. That's almost as Look rough looking that. as KDE. 
on <laughs> <No. laughs> it looks very similar to how Kubuntu looks out of the box nowadays, yes. <laughs> Doesn't really support TPM 2.0. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, a cross between Kubuntu and GNOME. <laughs> And that was the only, um, no, I'm just kidding. That wasn't the only shenanigans that the Windows 10 ISO leak and later on. Is there like an official beta that you can get now and uh, inflict it upon unsuspecting hardware? Yeah, because uh-huh. Microsoft realized that they weren't selling enough Windows licenses anymore because everyone went, oh, Windows 10 is the last one, right? So we're just going to stay here. Well, we're going to have to give it away, man. Um, <laughs> so who remembers uh, the Lumia? 950XL. Nokia. <laughs> well, oh. I do have a Nokia phone, <laughs> but it runs Android. <laughs> well, why don't you put Windows 11 on it, Pedro? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 Come no. Come on, look at it. It's, <laughs> it's long. Yeah, that would be... Well, at least the wallpaper looks nice. <laughs> It, oh, they're using the animated wallpaper And it wallpaper does. It too. looks like yeah. plasma. It, it almost looks like <laughs> plasma on the phone. <laughs> Definitely. This this is so falls under the uh, poke at it. And be like, ha, huh. well, it's kind of <laughs> working. All right. Uh, that was a um, very well done. And the, Oof, the, that was rough. Yeah. The person who um, made the video said that it, it, it was very quick, very rushed right there in the title. Mm-hmm. And that's impressive for something that was quick and rushed. That's impressive. Running in Windows 11 on the Raspberry Pi, eh, no. you're doing that to yourself. That's on you. That, that's actually kind of neat. <laughs> I, well, I mean, come on. Uh, it's exercises and weirdness. I, I like <laughs> people using, especially the Pi stuff, of just that curiosity. But can I do anything useful with this? Not really, but I can make a YouTube video and take some pictures. <laughs> And um, maybe it's the ultimate litmus test, yeah. you know, yeah. can it run Let's the play. desktop uh, operating system? Because that's all that <laughs> Windows is. And don't let Microsoft try to tell you anything else. Um, <laughs> no, there's just jelly of us, uh, us Linux users that can put almost anything on any device. <laughs> so. Kind of hard to do when you don't have the sauce. How about this? Uh, if you the want to tell us what sauce. you've put in Linux on, that's always a fun thing. You can send us a note. Use the contact form. Head over to linuxgamecast.com. we got a contact page. This is how you get a hold of us because we got topics. This show, LWDW. <laughs> give us a name. Give us an email subject. Give us a message. And that's going to be sent off. Like if you need, like, hey, I want to tell you about this thing. Or, hey, I'd like to come on the show and tell you about my project. We could arrange that. Or at least get the conversation ball rolling. Mm-hmm. Always looking forward to doing that. And um, yeah, leave a comment on YouTube. We'll probably read it. Either me or Pedro will. And um, Patreon. Patreon's got the little comment section. We'll definitely get back to you on that. Or if you just want to scream at us in Discord, that's the best place to do it. You don't know what Discord is. It's Slack. At <laughs> least we use it like Slack. That's where our conversation is. Like Pedro, myself, and Jordan have had this 10-year-old Hangouts conversation that has been through like 90 Google messaging services. <laughs> All of the different revisions of Hangouts. <laughs> and uh, you would think like, oh, that's where we talk. No, 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 no. The- <laughs> Everything happens there now. <laughs> Everything goes down on Discord. When I hear the ding in the message, like, something's wrong. That's pretty much it. But we are in there and we'll be in there after the show um, if you want to keep that going on. But we got to bounce out of here, everyone. Am I forgetting anything before we roll the credits, Jill? No, nope, you're not. You All got right. it. All right. <laughs> Off to Disney World with you then. Yes. <laughs> Disneyland. The original. <laughs> 1955. All right. Yay, Vin. Yeah, I had Yay, also uh, Eshep. You feel free to, uh, you know, hit me on Twitter. I don't check the DMs very often, but he's unmasked. I do check them every now and then. <laughs> so it's yeah. fine. Just <laughs> hit me up if you need to. It's fine. DMs on uh, on Twitter at unaccounted for. Again, he's They're unmasked on not Twitter. Keep <laughs> telling him to sign yeah. up for an account he doesn't have. <laughs> I, I, I am on That's Mastodon. where, where I uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, welcome to the war of attrition. Where I communicate yeah. with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Thanks for showing up. We'll be back next 
week. Till then. Oh, mm -hmm. and thank you, Garbs, for the sub. Sub Yay!